Japan over Scotland in the Rugby World Cup. Massive result, which sees them go through top of their pool. And it means, unfortunately for Scotland, their World Cup campaign ends at the group stages. Uh, kind of like Pool C, this was always seen uh, as a pool which, which would be tricky in terms of Ireland, Scotland, and Japan. To be fair, I think most of the talk pre-tournament was Ireland are going to go through top. Is it going to be Japan or Scotland who managed to get that second spot? Well, it's Japan top of the pool having won all their games. So they're going to go through and face South Africa with their World Cup history. That's going to be a fascinating match. But um, in terms of this game, it was definitely a game of two halves. Uh, when you look at the stats, which I'll go over in a minute, but um, so some magic and uh, really high pace to this game. So if you haven't seen this game, uh, check World Rugby's channel out for the highlights because some of them are, are pretty amazing. It starts off with Russell putting a little chip kick through and it bounces off one of the Japanese guys. They regather the ball, run halfway down the field. So there's all pressure on for the Scots early, but they manage to defend. And actually the Scots get the first points of the game. Uh, it is through Russell. The Scots go, I think, five, five or more phases. And then from about five or six meters out, Finn Russell just kind of does a little shimmy move. Nobody really gets a proper hand on him. He goes over for the try and it's converted by Laidlaw. Uh, it's 7-0 to Scotland early and it's what they needed because they needed a bonus point win and to try and deny Japan a bonus point. 16 minutes, uh, Nell gets penalized for a, a low tackle for no arms. It's a bit of a harsh one because it seems like it's a really specific zone you need to be tackling nowadays because if you're too low and you can't wrap the arm, which he was trying to do, you get penalized. If you go too high, you get carded. So it was tough, but Tamura missed that penalty, a bit of a pressure kick that he didn't he didn't quite get, which may be encouraging to South Africa because they got pretty reliable goal kickers on their end. Um, 16 minutes though, Matsushima, uh, he gets a try. It's both wingers out on the left. Uh, Fukuoka goes on the outside. His offload, it's magic. Uh, it goes to Matsushima and it's a seven apiece with the conversion. Uh, not long after the tight head coup, he goes off for Japan, which is not great news, uh, but they still managed to, to keep trucking on without him. Um, 26 minutes, Inagaki gets a try. Again, Matsushima gets the, gets the line break. He was, he was, him and Fukuoka had really big games. Uh, Fukuoka got man of the match. Uh, there was a Horie offload. There was a Moore offload and a Tupo offload. So three offloads in the build up to this try. It really was top stuff. Uh, it's 14 nil to Japan. There's a head clash just before the half hour mark between Gray and Horie a fair bit of talk about whether that should have been a yellow card. As far as I'm aware, head on head is just accidental. If so it's when you get your shoulder on somebody's head that you get in trouble. I mean, his shoulder, I think his arm did kind of droop down onto Horia's neck area after the head to head clash. But I think they're looking at that first contact head head. It's just accidental. How neither of those guys went off for an HIA, I'm not sure because it looked pretty brutal. Horia was bleeding, but. Um, they kept continuing on. Uh, it didn't stop Japan though because they got a scrum penalty on um, like 38 minutes, but Tamura missed the penalty again. But just like earlier when he missed the penalty, after missing the penalty, Japan managed to go ahead and score a try because 39 minutes, Fukuoka gets his try. It's after Scotland's 22 dropout. Lafayette puts a little kick through. Somehow Fukuoka manages to, to gash through and he showed some serious acceleration to grab the ball from like above his shoulder, get it under control, and uh, and yeah, go for the try. So, top stuff, uh, and at that point, it is 21 points to 7, with Japan looking pretty good, apart from a couple of missed penalties. Halftime stats, position, Japan 74%, territory, Japan 75%, run meters, Japan 339 to Scotland's 54. Japan were all over that first half. Uh, Japan in the first half tackled 87, 86%, made 24 tackles out of 28. Scotland in that first half, 80, 81%, had to make 91. So it just shows you how under pressure Scotland were in that first half. Second half, it doesn't start any better for Scotland. It's a bit of magic from Japan. Fukuoka, he rips the ball free in the tackle. It kind of bobbles loose before it hits the ground. He manages to regather it somehow. Seriously, go watch the highlights on World Rugby's channel. Uh, he, he catches it, he puts the hammer down again, he goes in for a try, 
uh, exactly what, what Scotland didn't need because that's the fourth try for Japan, a bonus point, which means now Scotland have to win by more than seven points. They need an eight-point win with four tries. Uh, it's looking pretty unlikely. But that being said, on 50 minutes, Nell gets a try uh, for Scotland. They go more than seven phases. He goes low. He's about a meter out. And, um, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a props try. And then a few minutes later, uh, Fagerson gets one. There's quick hands from, um, I think, from Johnny Gray, some other guys in the lead-up. There's really good hands from Scotland uh, with the offloads, and they make it 28-21. But that's the final scoring of the game. That's it. For the rest of the game, there's no scoring. Uh, on the hour mark, Japan did go 21 phases, but eventually Scotland got the turnover through Richie, and he was a bit of a turnover and tackling machine in this game. Um, just before 70 minutes, there was a bit of handbags between the players, a bit of biffo, but again, tensions were high. Um, Scotland guys may be getting a bit frustrated. They couldn't quite break down the Japanese defense. Scotland's attack at times was going backwards. They were almost getting through, but not quite. The Japanese defense was really solid. And that's the way the game ended. So 28 points uh, to 21. So Japan scored all their points in the first half and just at the start of the second and then that was it um scotland had the the start and then kind of the the third quarter and then that was that was really it so the, the final quarter of the game no points scored final stats evened out a wee bit japan had 550 run meters to 370 for scotland uh possession ended up 55 to japan and 57 percent territory so almost even remember how one-sided it was at half time if you look at the second half uh, scotland had 58 percent possession and 57 percent territory so they were able to get a lot more into the game but they were behind from from those tries conceded in the first half tackling percentages both sides ended up in the 80s Scotland made 157, Japan made 104 overall, so both sides also very busy defensively. Penalty count was relatively low, Japan conceding 7, Scotland conceding 4, a couple of those at scrum time, so yeah, amazing game, it was an amazing start, it, was, it wasn't that clinical at the end, it was more about the defense and the Japan, Japanese guys kind of controlling the clock, but the crowd was phenomenal, it was a really great atmosphere. Uh, it's a shame for Scotland that they have to go out, but from, from now on, there's going to be teams going out every week until we get a winner, so we'll see how things go. In terms of individuals, key guys, Fukuoka, like I mentioned, got man of the match. He had 110 run meters, seven defenders beaten, three clean breaks. He was amazing. Uh, Thompson for, for Japan again, the lock, who I gave a bit of stick uh, in the pool stages, well, the early pool stages, this is the end of the pool stages, 16 out of 17 tackles. Eat my words for sure, he is... Uh, having a, a blinder can't ignore the scots though because gray had 25 out of 25 tackles he is a tackling machine uh richie had a few turnovers i think it was at least three and 24 out of 26 tackles so uh in a losing effort um they certainly put their hands up and tried their best for their their nation but not quite enough to get it done so yeah that's how it ended 28 points to 21 japan go through top of the pool they will play south africa that's going to be huge New Zealand play Ireland, that's also going to be huge. Uh, I'm going to bed, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. i got work in 6 hours, 4 hours. 4 hours I'm getting up, 6 hours I'm going to work. So, um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys again soon. Let me know your thoughts. See you later.